I'm John Copley. I'm here at the EMBO meeting 2012 in Nice to teach a workshop about presentation skills for scientists. And I've got five top tips when it comes to giving an effective scientific presentation. One is knowledge. How do you choose the content to put into your presentation? Then we have the structure. Are you there to grab attention in a very short talk or do you have to sustain the interest of the audience over a long talk and how do you do that? Then there's the language that you use. Finally, you need to think about slides as well and what goes into a good, effective slide to present your work. And last, but by no means least, it's finding the passion, the belief in what you're presenting is vitally important for an effective presentation. How do you choose the content that's going to be appropriate for the people listening in, in the audience? We often work very specialist, even within our own fields, and so we, we often have to choose something that's a little bit broader to get our message across. And a good tip for how to do this is to ask yourself, when did I last share an education with the people in my audience in the subject area that I'm talking about? Then if we think about structure, you really have two choices. If it's a short presentation, the goal is to grab attention. And then you really need to put your key message actually at the top. Well, that's an effective way of doing it anyway as an option. However, if you're there to give 25 minutes, 45 minute keynote presentation, then the goal is actually sustaining the interest of the audience. And to do that, you actually need to use a little bit of narrative, a little bit of managing the expectations of the audience, and maybe not giving the game away in detail at the start, but setting up where it's going to go and then fulfilling it. If we think about language, then it's very interesting that we use jargon when we're talking to fellow specialists in our, in our particular fields as a very effective shorthand. But outside of our particular fields, jargon can often be meaningless, but also sometimes there are words that have a very specific meaning that mean something completely different for somebody outside that field. An example would be something like the word model. We often talk about animal models for disease, but to a lot of people, a model could be something you build as a representation. It could be you know, somebody who walks down a catwalk in the fashion world. Then if we think, I also have to think about our visual materials that accompany our presentations. And here, I think that good slides are simple slides. And I'm still amazed when I go to conferences to see speakers stand up with complex, complex tables of illegible numbers, very, very small, hard to read from the audience, who say, well, you don't need to be able to read all this. If you don't need to be able to read or interpret it all, why is it on your slide? <laughs> Finally, I think passion is the most important currency of an effective presentation. Inevitably, you know, you're presenting work that you have put a lot of effort into generating, and therefore you must be passionate about it, you must believe in it, and it's about connecting with that, finding that passion. That will help you come across really effectively in your presentations. So five tips then for effective presentations, thinking about the knowledge, the content, choosing an effective structure, choosing our words, our language very carefully, thinking about what are effective slides, and finally finding and connecting with that passion, that belief in what we're presenting.